This is the video where you learn everything you need to know about your Insta360 action camera. This camera can be used in so many different ways and that makes it extremely versatile. But that also means it can be a little bit complicated when you're first starting out. Or maybe you've been using it a while and you haven't quite got to grips with it yet. Either way, this video is for you because I'm going to start with the basics and then really explore this device's full potential. The version I have comes with various accessories for mounting the camera. A lens guard, as well as these ND filters which help you to make your footage look smoother when filming in daylight. What I like about this camera is that it opens up creative opportunities not available with bigger cameras, even with smartphones. Insta360 app is pretty essential for using the camera. There's various settings controls including ISO and shutter speed, as well as editing software, so you'll want to install that if you haven't already. When you first use your Insta360 Go 2, you're going to need to activate it via the app and Wi-Fi. Make sure to connect the app to your camera using Bluetooth and install any firmware before you do anything else. So this part is the camera and this is the charging case. So you can capture photos and video using only this camera part or you can use it when it's mounted within the charging case. The camera has a magnet at the back which holds it securely within the case and this magnet can also be used to stick the camera to a metal surface which is one of the popular features of this little camera. And as well you use this magnet to attach the camera to the pendant. The case opens with a hinge at one end. When you open it, it asks you to connect the case to the camera. Press the button on the right once to connect. This button is called the mode button. And once it's connected, you can use the mini screen and two buttons to control the camera. And you can use it in the case, holding it, or with these two little legs, which you can pull out, and then you turn the case into a kind of tiny tripod and then you can just rest it on a table or something. The legs are a bit delicate, so you just need to be a bit careful with them. You can also remove the camera part from the case and use it as a standalone camera. Another option is to use the charging case as a remote control. So in that case, you could use the magnet or clip to place the camera somewhere and then control it from the case remotely. And as well, you can use the Insta360 smartphone app as a remote control for capturing photos and videos. Now, if you use the app, you will get a preview of what you're capturing. So that's one big advantage. But the app can also be used to edit videos and access settings, tutorials, and quite a bit more. And the charging case also has a place to mount it to a tripod or a monopod or any kind of extension handle with a regular tripod sized screw. So that's a basic overview of the Insta360 Go To. Now let's try recording a video. With the camera mounted in the charging case, press the record button. In the mini screen, the video camera icon moves to the middle and the minutes and seconds counter starts ticking along. And the indicator light also starts flashing. Press the record button again to stop recording. The video is now going to be saved to the camera's memory. To start recording with just the camera, use the action button, which is basically the bottom part of the camera. Press once and the camera starts recording. When the light below the lens starts flashing, that means the camera is recording video. And as before, just press the action button once again to stop recording. To get access to the videos we've just recorded, we either need to use the Insta360 app, the Insta360 Studio software for desktop, or you can just simply connect the device directly to your computer. Open the app and connect to the Insta360 via Bluetooth. Tap the camera icon and the app will try to connect. So this isn't really the smoothest app I've ever experienced and you might find connecting 
just takes a couple of tries and also it does take some time to connect. But once connected, tap the album button. The app will now access the video files from the camera. If you play a video, you're actually going to be streaming it from the camera's memory. You can see where the video files are by using this drop down menu in the top left corner. All shows you your videos on your phone and on the camera. Select local to see videos that are stored on your phone or select camera for videos that are stored on the camera. Using the app, you can move files from the go to to your phone, but you can also edit clips in the app as well. You can access your Insta360 GoTo media files by connecting the charging case to your computer with the cable supplied. Or in my case, I just used a USB-C to USB-C cable, and this is basically my Samsung smartphone charger cable. The Insta360 GoTo will switch to USB mode, indicated in the mini screen here. And the device should now appear as an external drive. So open it up and navigate to the folder containing the files. Now they do look a bit different depending on which format you used to record them. They also look different to how they appear using the Insta360 app or studio software. So the Insta360 Studio program is free to download for Mac or PC. To access your videos, connect the camera to your computer using the USB-C port. And when you open the program, it should automatically detect a connected Insta360 Go 2. And you can choose to select files or simply import everything on the device. Now compared to the Insta360 app on your smartphone, this desktop software is actually pretty limited but we'll talk a bit more about that later. So now that we know how to find our videos, let's have a quick look at how to edit them. GoTo videos can be edited with the Insta360 app on your smartphone, or you can take them directly to your editing software for editing. If you recorded a video in pro mode, you will get a lot more options within the Insta360 app. In fact, to get the full power of the GoTo camera, you should really use pro mode. But that said, if you're looking to do something quickly, then I do understand why you'd want to use regular video mode. So I'm going to talk about editing pro mode video a bit later, but first let's look at basic editing. So just tap the stories button located in the bottom menu. Now tap create a story. Use the drop down menu to find local files, which are the files you have downloaded onto your phone. You can actually use any video files here, not only go to files. Just tap where it says phone. Select one or more files you want to edit together. Tap the yellow selected button at the bottom. So now you've got these different options. Flash cut will use AI to make a sequence for you. Otherwise, just tap manual editing. And whichever one you choose, you will eventually end up in the same place, which is the Insta360 video editor. And if you've ever used apps like VN or CapCut, this is going to look familiar and it works in a pretty similar way. If you choose flash cut, it will pick some music and create an edit, which you can then go in and work on yourself. So this might be a good way to get started on an edit. And you can do all the usual stuff here, trim clips, change aspect ratio, slow down or speed up a clip, add music, transitions, filters, color adjustments, and so on. When you're done, export the final video using the yellow button top right. And this creates a new file, which you can then share from your phone's gallery as normal. So I will go into the editing section of the app in more detail later, but for now, let's get back to the basics of the camera. So now that you know how to record a video and how to find that video, let's look at how to use a GoTo as a standalone camera. We can take the camera out of the charging case and use the button on the bottom to record video and take photos. A single press or a double press will do different things. And as well, the camera being switched on or off also makes a difference to what happens when you single or double press. When the camera is switched off so that the indicator light is off, a single press starts recording video in normal video mode. Single press again to stop recording. Double press takes a photo. So the camera just kind of switches on, takes a photo and then switches itself off again. If you want to turn on the camera, press and hold the button. First, the light is dark blue. So just wait for it to turn light blue. 
So when the camera is switched on, a single press starts recording video, but in pro mode this time. Press again to stop recording. Double press starts a hyperlapse video recording. So just a note here, so you can tell the difference between recording a video and recording a hyperlapse. When you're recording a hyperlapse, the indicator light will flash faster than when recording normal video. So that helps you to know your double tap has worked and the camera is indeed recording hyperlapse video. So when recording any video, pressing once again is going to stop it recording. To switch the camera off, press and hold until it turns off. Now, these are actually the default settings, but you can actually assign the single and double tap to different things using the Insta360 GoTo app. So let's look at all the modes and settings accessed via the charging case's mini screen. So when in video mode, the mini screen displays various bits of information. Top left is the remaining memory. Top right is the field of view. 1440p is the resolution of the video. 16 by 9 is the current aspect ratio. And 30 stands for the frame rate, 30 frames per second. If we now press the right button, we can shuttle through the various modes. Video, photo, pro video, time shift, time lapse, HDR video, slow-mo, and finally settings. To select a mode, you just locate it using the right button. You don't need to do anything else. To open settings, select settings, and then press the record button. And now you can shuttle through various options by using the mode button. So again, you just use the right button to navigate to a setting and then use the record button to select that setting or to change it. By the way, you can also access the video menu settings when you're in video mode. You just long press on the record button and that's the same for all the different modes. If you just long press the record button, you open up the settings. Now let's look at video settings where it says 16 by 9 allows you to switch between landscape or portrait. 9 by 16 is portrait. 1440p is the resolution of the video, and this is actually the maximum resolution. So the actual resolution here is 2560 by 1440 pixels. 1080p is the only other option, which of course is 1920 by 1080. When shooting video, I pretty much always use the maximum quality possible. But if you know you don't need the extra quality and you want to save storage space, then of course, use 1080p. Another reason to use 1080p is if you're worried about the camera overheating, which the GoTo is actually prone to. So next is frame rate. Options here are 24, 25, 30, and 50 frames per second. Below that is the field of view setting. Switch between ultra wide, action view, linear, and narrow. And these all give you a different kind of framing. Now we have the color profile of the video where you can switch between standard, log, and vivid. So log is desaturated, which is more useful for color grading your video later, while vivid has extra color saturation. The timer setting allows you to select a maximum duration for a video. And this means the camera will automatically stop recording when it reaches the time set here. So you can go from 15 seconds all the way up to 30 minutes. The Insta360 GO 2 takes raw photos by default, but if you switch this off, it takes 9 megapixel photos, which will be lower quality, but they'll also use up less storage space. When raw is selected, you will see pure shot in the mini screen. So there's not too many settings to play with here, apart from switching raw on and off. You can set a timer of 3, 5 or 10 seconds. When you edit pure shot photos, you will get an image which uses the whole go-to sensor, which you can then reframe. So like with video, I'd say the true power of this device really lies in what you can do when editing your media later. And that's especially true when we talk about pro video compared to normal video. So it's generally advised to use pro video as this gives you many more options when editing as well as superior stabilization. One difference between the two modes is that in regular video mode, when you rotate the camera, the video is going to rotate as well, like with an ordinary camera. But 
Pro Video Mode has Horizon Lock, which means that the video does not rotate with the camera. And instead, you can add rotation later using the Insta360 app. Or you can actually switch off Horizon Lock when editing. Another difference is that Pro Videos, captured in the 1440 resolution setting, actually create videos which are 2688 by 2688 pixels. And this gives you options for editing the video in different ways. For example, reframing, adding keyframes or stabilization before outputting at a standard aspect ratio. Video files captured using the Pro Mode are going to be marked as Pro Videos when you import them into the app or studio software for editing. So that does make it easier to keep track of which files were shot in which mode. For settings here, they are all exactly the same as for regular video, which I went through before. One thing to bear in mind when choosing a field of view, in regular video mode, whatever you choose before recording is going to be what you get at the end. But when using Pro Video, no matter what you choose here, you're going to be able to switch this when editing later. So in fact, it doesn't really matter which field of view you choose in Pro Video. Next mode is Time Shift, and this mode is basically the same as the more commonly used term, Hyperlapse. A hyperlapse video is like time lapse with everything speeded up, except the camera moves. So you can use this mode walking, riding a bike or driving a car and so on. When editing, you can adjust the speed or even add motion blur. The Insta360 Go To is really great for hyperlapse because it's so small and it can be easily carried or mounted on basically anything that the magnet can stick to. So the settings for time shift are basically the same as we've already covered. So let's move on to time lapse. Time lapse is similar to hyperlapse, except normally the camera is fixed in place and doesn't actually move. And again, the go-to is great for time lapse for the same reason as it's great for hyperlapse, because it's small and you can easily set it up somewhere. For settings, the only thing different here is the interval setting. So time lapse works by taking photos, say every one or every five seconds. And here we can go from 0.5 seconds all the way up to 120 seconds. Half a second will just speed things up a little while 120 seconds apart is really going to speed things up considerably. So you might want to use that for showing a flower blooming or maybe a whole day passing in a few seconds. HDR mode uses software to increase the dynamic range of the video. And this means shadows will look lighter and have more detail and bright areas like the sky will look less blown out. If we navigate through the HDR settings, we can see that they are pretty much the same. The only difference is that you can only choose 24 or 25 frames per second in this mode. And that's because of the extra processing power that's required to add this HDR look. When you shoot an HDR video, this creates a pro video, but with extra dynamic range. This means we can edit an HDR video in the app or Insta360 Studio just like Pro Video, change the field of view, stabilization, and all the rest. In slow motion mode, the Go To will shoot video at 120 frames per second, and then it will play it back at a slower frame rate. There's no option to change resolution or frame rate, so it's 120 frames per second and 1080p. The other settings are the same as covered before. You can also edit slow mo video like Pro Mode video but with fewer editing options. This is one situation where the Insta360 Studio software does a bit of a better job than the Insta360 app, because in Studio you can edit the speed of a slow-mo video fully, whereas in the app you can only add changes to a 120 frames per second video. But this does actually mean that you can slow the video even more in the app, but it won't look as smooth. There's no option to change to 9x16 either, so if you want to record slow motion in portrait, you need to turn the camera 90 degrees when you're recording. So one of the three ways to capture images with the GoTo camera is to use the Insta360 app as a remote. After connecting your smartphone to the GoTo, tap the camera button at the bottom. And you should now see a preview of the camera screen. And this is going to be a little bit delayed as it has to be streamed from the camera to the phone via Bluetooth. If you swipe left and right along the bottom, you can switch between the various modes. By default, the app starts in regular video mode. All the modes to the right of video mode are other kinds of video modes. 
And that's basically all the modes that we've already talked about previously. But there's one extra mode here, which is called Reframe Live, which is basically for live streaming. However, before you get excited, Insta360 says that the GoTo does not currently support live streaming. All the modes to the left of standard video are still photo modes. So we have night shot, interval and star lapse. Another way to switch modes is to use the menu button in the bottom right corner. At the top, we've got color, field of view and resolution setting controls. And plus these three dots top right open up some more options. Add a grid and a histogram or go and watch some tutorials. Most of the features are the same features you can access with the charging case. But one feature unique to the Insta360 app is the access to manual control. And this allows you to set shutter speed, ISO and white balance. Tap where it says auto mode and switch to manual. And now you get three controllers for those three different settings. With white balance, you can actually only set one of four different Kelvin numbers. So you can't really fine tune. So it's got to be either 5000 or 4000 and nothing in between. But at least this means it will be locked for the shot. You can also choose ISO or shutter speed priority. For example, if you want to make sure the ISO is fixed and the only thing which will automatically change is the shutter speed, because a high ISO can create nasty digital noise. So we could set ISO to say 100 and now let auto exposure set the shutter speed. And this way we're guaranteed to avoid digital noise, but we might find the shot is underexposed if there's not enough light. Instead of using manual mode, we can simply choose to use EV, which stands for exposure value. If you think the exposure is too bright, just reduce the EV to a negative value. If you want to set a maximum length for your video, tap the button to the right of the auto mode button. You might be filming some kind of action and aren't able to hit the stop button. Or maybe you just want some short clips. So this means all you have to do is hit record and then relax, knowing it's going to stop after a certain time. So you can set it as short as 15 seconds and as long as 30 minutes. But if you do set it to 30 minutes, you're going to get a warning saying that the go to might overheat because overheating is one of the common issues of this camera. And one way to reduce overheating is actually to shoot at a lower resolution, as I mentioned earlier, because even if I just leave the camera switched on and connected to the app for 20 minutes, it actually does heat up quite a bit. So editing a video you've shot in pro mode allows you to make quite a few changes. Tap a video with the pro in the bottom right corner. The video immediately starts playing. Press on the video and hold to add a keyframe. And that then allows you to adjust the role of the video or as well reframe the video. But if you push too far, you're going to see the edges of the frame appear. Remember that the GoTo Pro video gives you a square file, but it's like a circle of usable video within that square. And setting your field of view to narrow is going to give you the most room to reframe things. You'll be able to move further before you hit the jaggedy edges of the circle. And there's also these messed up parts of the image you want to avoid getting into frame. This also adds a keyframe, which means you can have the framing change during the shot by adding further keyframes later in the video. Trim brings up two different trimming options. There's a basic trim, which allows you to cut off the start and end of the video. There's also jump cut, which allows you to make a number of edits through the video using jump cuts. If you tap jump cut, you're gonna get this white circle with the scissor symbol, move the video to the beginning of the bit where you want to keep. Tap the white button and swipe along to the end of the section of video that you want to keep. Tap the scissor button, which is now yellow. The highlighted area is going to be the part which will be kept. Swipe along, tap the scissors again, swipe and basically repeat this for as many sections as you want to keep. Now, when you tap the tick, everything in the darker areas of the video are going to be deleted, leaving only the highlighted areas. So this is pretty useful if you have a really long clip and you just want to grab the best parts. Next button allows you to change the aspect ratio. Remember with pro video, you are cropping into a larger square video. So therefore there's no issue here with quality loss. Tap to enable color plus, which seems to add extra contrast to the video. And basically it gives the image a bit more punch, but you might also find it makes the video a bit more noisy and banding a bit more visible as well. 
next button allows us to change the field of view. So we have the same four options I've already talked about before. One thing to note is that choosing wide or action appears to switch off horizon lock, even though it actually says it's switched on. But you can use the keyframes again to adjust it. Snapshot simply takes a still frame from wherever you have the playhead and places it in the phone's photo album. So I think most of us know what Beautify does now. Just adds beautifying effects to a human face, allegedly. And you can add music here from Insta360's library. There's quite a range of tracks. First, it will recommend to you five tracks, but tap more to find a wider range under a bunch of headings. I would assume that these tracks are royalty free and therefore usable on YouTube, but I haven't actually tested that yet. You can use the speed setting to speed up or slow down the video at chosen points. Tap a speed setting and now swipe the timeline to create a duration for this speed and then tap the tick. If you have motion blur toggled on here, it's going to add motion blur to the final video. And this is useful for any hyperlapse type videos. You can see that you don't really need to use the hyperlapse or time shift modes when shooting video. You could just shoot a pro video clip and change the speed when editing. The downside of doing this is that you're going to end up with a bigger file taking up memory space on the camera. And you can actually add more than one speed change to a clip. So for example, you can kind of add speed ramp style effects throughout a longer clip. Filter allows you to add preset color looks to your video. Tap the filter and then tap again to open up a slider, which allows you to control how strong you want the filter to be. The first two filters, Tilt Shift and Comic, don't actually have a slider, so they're just kind of on or off. Adjust opens up all the regular color grading type controls, so you can adjust things like contrast, saturation, and so on. Freeze Frame does what it says. It simply freezes the video for a few seconds at that moment, and you can choose between three, five, and 10 seconds. As it says at the top here, you won't see the frozen frame until you've actually exported the video. So Mark just drops a yellow marker onto the timeline below. So if you do have a very long take, it might be useful to just go through it and add markers at the relevant parts, parts that you want to find quickly later. So the best parts, probably. If you tap the three dots at the top right of the screen, you open up more settings. And here you can switch stabilization and horizon lock on or off. There's also AquaVision if you're editing a clip you filmed underwater. The GoTo is a great camera for shooting barrel roll shots. This is where the camera rotates in a circular motion and it can be really fun to do. But talking about this now is also going to give you a good understanding of how the GoTo works. So here's a simple step-by-step -step guide to walk you through it. For this, I'm going to use the highest resolution and the highest frame rate. Shooting at 50 frames per second means I can slow the video down when editing to create a slow motion effect. When shooting in pro video mode, you don't need to worry about the field of view or color settings as they can be changed later. The magic of the GoTo is that we don't need to rotate the camera when we're filming. In fact, it doesn't matter which angle you hold the camera. Hold the camera at any angle and the video will stay level with the horizon. And this is because, as I said before, when you record video in pro mode, it actually captures a square video with the corners kind of rounded off due to the nature of the wide angle lens. And when we edit the video, we can adjust the field of view and have the frame spin as if the camera itself is spinning. It's possible to edit the video while it's still on the camera, but I'm gonna transfer the video from the camera to my iPhone. And this means I can switch off the camera as well I will have a better editing experience. If you leave it on the camera, you're gonna experience some lag as your phone has to keep streaming the video from the camera via Bluetooth. And that's gonna use more battery as well. To download the video to your phone, select the video you want to use for the barrel roll. So just tap the checkbox in the top right corner, tap the video and you get a yellow circle with a tick. Tap the download button at the bottom. When we switch to the local folder, we can now see all the videos that we have downloaded onto the device. Tap to select the video and it will immediately start playing. And now we can choose the field of view. The linear view is probably the closest to an ultra wide lens on a smartphone, I would say. While narrow, my estimation is that it's kind of like the regular wide lens on a smartphone. So next, find the point in the video where you want the barrel roll to begin. 
pause the video and then tap and hold until you get a yellow circle. And this now adds a keyframe to the video at this point. And now you'll be able to adjust the roll using this slider control. So this goes all the way to plus 360 degrees or all the way to minus 360 degrees. So this actually means that the maximum amount of barrel roll we can create goes from minus 360 to plus 360, which comes to 720 degrees. You got it. So if we want to do that, set the first keyframe to minus 360, move or play to a later point in the video. Again, tap and hold to create another keyframe. Now swipe to adjust the rotation amount. And if we want, we can rotate to the maximum plus 360. All in all, that's going to create this 720 degree roll. We can add further keyframes, in fact, as many keyframes as we want. But if the previous keyframe was 360, then we cannot go past that with the next keyframe. We can only go in reverse. To remove a keyframe, move over it until you get a yellow circle with an X and just tap it. So once you're happy, export the video and a new video is going to be created with the barrel roll added. A fun way to use a barrel roll is to make it look like the camera. It's kind of locked to a rotating object. So you don't need to rotate the camera. Just shoot the video and keep the camera centered on the spinning object. And then in the app, adjust the keyframes. It takes a bit of fiddling around and just try to match the spin of the object. So it's actually possible to take the video files directly from your go-to camera, drag them onto your computer drive, and then import them directly into an editing program. If I open up the folder on the camera containing files, we can see there is a pro video file, as well as a file labeled pro LRV. The LRV file is a low resolution file used for previewing in the app. So therefore don't use this file if you're taking files directly from the camera. I can drag the pro video file onto my laptop and then bring it into Adobe Premiere, but you can see I do not get the full square video. It actually crops it down to the 1440p size. Even if I zoom out on the timeline, you can see it's still cropped. If you've used any mode apart from pro video, this is going to be fine. Regular video, time lapse, slow mo, and so on are ready to go, so you can just drop them straight in. But when you're using pro mode, what you get is this square video. Of course you can actually use this video, but most likely you're going to want to set the field of view, add stabilization, maybe add some keyframes. And to do those things, you're going to need to use the Insta360 app or the Insta360 Studio. So like I say, bear in mind that the Insta360 Studio does not currently allow you to add keyframes. Anyway, so I'm just going to quickly go through an overview of the Insta360 Studio. Insta360 provides a free piece of software called Studio for Mac and Windows. And this allows you to make some edits, but like I say, you currently cannot add keyframes. So while it's nice to have things set out on a bigger monitor, what we can do is quite a bit more limited compared to the app. Connect your go-to using a cable and open Studio. You can import all files or drag and drop individual files. There's also a plugin available for Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro, which would allow you to make limited adjustments directly within those editing platforms. And the advantage of that would be that you can make adjustments within a Premiere or Final Cut Pro sequence, rather than having to keep switching back to a different program every time you wanted to change it. A studio doesn't allow you to edit different shots together on a timeline. All it does is allow you to switch the field of view aspect ratio as well as trim a clip. It is possible to reframe a video like with the app. Click and hold and then drag to reframe. As there's no keyframes, this will reframe the entire clip. One thing you can do in this program is to change the type of stabilization. Another advantage is being able to change the speed of a slow-mo video, as I mentioned earlier. 
Now, when you export, you can choose a ProRes codec, which is higher quality. But the thing is, because we're starting with an H.264 file, you can't really add any extra quality by using this. But one advantage is that it will lose less quality, as well as being a bit better for editing and grading. And the downside is that it will create much bigger video files. So the ProRes files output from here are going to be about five times the size of an H.265 file. Now, this software also has a noise reduction tool when exporting. So if you have been filming in low light and you find you have some ugly noise, then you can try using the noise reduction here. Another thing you can do is create a time shift shot. Place the playhead where you want it to begin. Click the time shift button. Drag to the right as far as you want to apply the time shift. Click and it's going to be applied to the video. ND filters are going to allow you to get smoother looking footage in bright conditions by slowing the shutter speed. Thing is, for action footage, you might actually prefer the sharper, faster shutter speed look. But maybe for other types of videos, a smoother look could be nicer. For example, maybe some B-roll footage or vlogging footage. So these ones are by Telesin and came with my purchase but you can actually buy them separately for not too much money on aliexpress these are selling for about 15 pounds and the box holds three nd filters of different strengths and a cpl filter which is good for reducing sunlight glare to add a filter first you need to remove the lens protector which screws on and off and this is a little bit fiddly to do unlike the nice dji pocket filters and lenses which use a magnet, this uses a screw, which is much more fiddly. So don't expect to do this in a hurry, or if you've got frozen hands, for example. But I find this easier to do when the camera is not in the charger. Just be careful not to cross the thread, because you could find yourself unable to use it again. So the GoTo also has a little inbuilt microphone, and this is what it sounds like. So it's just at the top here. And it also works underwater, but it's probably not the best microphone ever. But it's, uh, it does quite a, a decent job. The thing about the Go 2 is that it's quite a complicated little setup. It's very versatile, there's lots of options. You've got two different editing apps, and, uh, you, and also you can just take the file straight in, as I talked about. But and then there's all the different recording options. There's like five different recording options. And it can be a bit difficult to kind of remember all these things. Of course, you can check back through um, this tutorial. It's not always convenient. So for that reason, I've uh, created a cheat sheet. So it's all in one A4 downloadable PDF for members on Patreon. Plus there's like four eBooks I've got on there. Um, for basics of video recording on a smartphone, but it's a lot of it is relevant to using a, an action camera like this. There's a book on film look, where I go quite deeply into that. There's a book on using gimbals, which of course, is, again, it's kind of relevant to this camera because it kind of acts like a gimbal. You can do crane shots with this, you can stick it on a monopod or extension handle extension and do the same kind of thing with uh, that you could do with a gimbal so that's it for this video uh, if you did enjoy it and found it useful please let me know by giving it a thumbs up it's getting windy now so you'll probably hear some some uh, distortion on the microphone um yeah so that's it and i'll see you in the next video hopefully